Hi everyone, my name is Ray. I'm here at Little Gardens Yoga Studio in Buda, Texas. This will be a 75 minute hot yoga class. This class is based on the traditional hot yoga sequence. And in a 75 minute class, we'll be doing most postures twice and some of them once. Come stand up in front of the mat. Feet heels together nicely. Grow your spine long. Make some space in between your vertebrae. Start to ground from the bottom of your feet all the way up to the crown of the head. And when you're ready, interlace all ten of your fingers. Place them underneath your chin like glue. Keep this position your entire pranayama breathing. Two sets today. Start with easy inhale. Arms up. Head down, chin parallel to the floor, ribs together, tight glutes, squeeze your inner thighs. Now open your mouth, push your neck up and back, bring your elbows together to touch, elbows toward the mirror in front of you. Inhale, six counts, synchronize the movement between head and arms, chin down, arms up. Exhale, completely into your lungs, at the bottom of the breath, push your neck up and back, elbows to touch. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, Hold it. Exhale. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold it. Inhale. Now keep that pace. Head down, arms up. Pull your ribs together. Tighten your glutes. Squeeze your inner thighs. Now open your mouth. Push your neck up and back. Elbows to touch. Elbows off the chest. Elbows toward the mirror in front of you. Inhale. Nice and slow. Roll the breath in the nose over the throat. Audible inhale. Exhale, now open your mouth. With an AJ breath, push your neck up and back. Bring your elbows together to touch. Inhale, four more here in the first set. Keep it slow, pull your ribs together tight, elbows up to the sky. Exhale, push it out. Completely into your lungs at the bottom of the breath. High out, push it all out into the lungs. Inhale, full lungs, three more here. Elbows up, head down. Look forward, look at yourself, pull your ribs together. Exhale, completely into your lungs. Bring your elbows together to touch, elbows toward the mirror in front. Last two, inhale, let's make them really strong. Synchronize the movement here between head and arms. Exhale, big A to breath. Hear your audible breath, push the neck up and back, knuckles in the chin. Inhale, last one here, nice and strong. Elbows up all the way to the sky, full lungs. Exhale, completely into the lungs at the bottom of the breath, hold it at the bottom. Push out the air, empty the lungs. Nice, that's enough. All right, relax, roll your shoulders up and back a couple of times. We're gonna do a second set. We'll do about five or six in the second set. When you're ready, then release all 10 of your fingers, place them underneath your chin like glue. Now press your knuckles into your chin, keep this position your entire pointing on the breathing. Start, please, inhale, six counts. Head down, arms up, ribs together, tight glutes, squeeze your inner thighs, full bones. Now exhale, push your neck up and back, as you bring your elbows together to touch, elbows toward the mirror. Inhale, nice and slow. Keep it slow. The slower you go, the more energy you get from your pranayama breath. Full lungs. Exhale, completely empty the lungs at the bottom of the breath. Now push your neck up and back. Look for the windows behind you. Inhale, nice and slow. Synchronized movement here. Full lungs on the inhale. Roll the breath over the throat. Exhale, neck up and back. No bending in the back. Elbows to touch, elbows toward the mirrors, elbows off the chest. Last two, here we go, make them really strong. Inhale, full lungs, look at yourself in the mirror, audible inhale, now exhale. Push your neck up and back, completely into your lungs, the bottom of the breath, push your neck up and back. Last one, nice and strong, full lungs here on the inhale, all the way up, sip in more air at the top of the breath, and then open your mouth. Push your neck up and back. Elbows to touch, elbows toward the mirror in front of you, into your lungs fully. Nice. Good work, y'all. All right, shake it off a little bit. We're going to move into our warm-up series. This is Ardha Chandrasana to Padhastasana. Half moon pose, two hands to feet. We'll do two sets here to warm up the spine and the hamstrings. Bring your arms up overhead, interlace all ten of your fingers, release your pointer fingers, and stretch the body long. If you're reaching up out of your waist, take a moment here and start to tick tock your body side to side, right, left, right, left, right, left. Each time you pass back through the center of your mat, you're going to reach up, stretch longer, grow taller. When you feel like you can't reach anymore, you can't grow any taller, you come back into the center and you reset. So we'll meet back in the middle and squeeze the biceps. No gap, no distance in between the ears and the arms. Make sure your arms are straight. You're pressing your palms together all the way from your wrist into the index finger. Weight in the heels, both hip points pressing forward. Take a big inhale. 
On your exhale, breathing, bend your body to the right. Arda Chandrasana, half moon pose. Now look at your left hip, see if you need to pull it slightly forward. Open up your right shoulder by pulling it back toward the windows behind you. You're opening up your chest here like a flower petal blooming. See if you can go down a little deeper. Press your left hip over beyond the outer edge of your left foot. Pull your arms long. Send your breath into the left side ribs and go down and push. Chin up, arms longer. Reach and stretch. Shoot the left hip over beyond the edge of the left foot and go down a little deeper. Palms together, chin up, arms back. Go down and push and push and push and change. Back to the center. Reach up. Big stretch long here. Inhale. Exhale, breathing. Bend your body to the left. Ardha Chandrasana. This is a half moon pose. Eventually, look like perfect half moon crescents from the side. This time, you may need to pull your right hip slightly forward. Look at yourself in the mirror. Don't lose your gaze. Line up your hips and line up your shoulders. You're keeping everything squared forward in front of the mirror toward the mirror. So pull your fingers long. Take your left hand. Pull your right arm over closer to the mirror to the left and go down. Push a little more. Chin up. Arms back. See if you can get your right hip to go beyond the outer, outer edge of your left foot and go down and push and push and push and change back to the center. Now back bending, relax. Weight of the heels, hips forward, drop your head. Relax your neck, don't be scared. Completely relax. Immediately now take your arms back. Your arms are coming back to the biceps here. So your biceps are coming back to the temples is what I meant to say. So get your arms back to the temples. Go back, weight in the heels, reach back, look back, fall back, more back, way back, and change. Nice work. All right, now come forward, hinging over the hips, bring the fingertips down to the floor. Feel free to bend your knees a little if you need to there to protect the low back. And you're going to start to move around here a little bit, wiggle the knees forward and back, keeping the heels down. We'll give you a nice deep stretch into the hamstrings. You can also take any other movement that feels like your body is calling for today. So if you need to take a couple squats or lunges or anything else to just warm up the body, feel free to do that now. This is the part of the practice that we get to do some mindful body movement. I call it mindful body awareness so that you can really check in with the body and notice what the body needs and just move through this space any way that you feel is calling for. All right, let's move into hands to feet pose. So bend your knees a whole lot and place your belly on the thighs. Reach your hands back behind your heels or place your hands directly on the calves behind you. If your hands are underneath your heels, then see if you can bring your baby fingers together to touch side by side. Now pull your opposite elbows back behind your shins so you can touch your elbows toward one another. Cross your forehead into the shins, roll forward and lift your hips. Pull hard. The object of this posture is the grip, right? The grip is the key to pulling through the hamstrings, stretching out the hamstrings. So keep the belly on the thighs. There's no gap, no daylight in between the belly and the thighs. Roll forward. Pull hard. Remember, the grip is key to stretching through the hamstrings. This is a full body stretch. Coccyx to the crown of the head, coccyx down to the bottom of the feet. So pull hard. Roll forward. Exhale, breathing. Lock your knees. One more time. Roll forward, exhale, breathing, lock your knees, lock your knees, lock your knees, and change. Come out, now suck your belly in, engage your core all the way up, strong arms, steeple grip all the way up, belly in, and release. All right, take a breath here, in the nose, out the nose. Second set, you won't hold as long, let's refine. Arms up, interlace your ten fingers, release the pointer fingers, stretch your body long like you're reaching up out of your waist. Now look at yourself in the mirror and don't lose your gaze. Chin up, arms back. Make sure you're squeezing your biceps so much there's no gap in daylight in between the biceps and the temples. Now hips are forward, weight in the heels. Take a big inhale. On your exhale, breathing, keeping your shoulders and your hips in one line, bend your body to the right. Arda Chandrasana half moon, like a half moon crescent. Press your hips forward to open up the pelvis. Put your weight in your heels. Pull both arms more back. Chin up, arms strong, arms straight. Take your right arm, pull the left arm over a little bit closer to the windows to the right. Maybe you need to pull your right hip slightly forward, left shoulder back to open up your chest like a flower petal blooming. See if you can get your left hip to go beyond the outer edge of your left foot. Chin up, arms back, go down and push. Find your edge, push a little more. Find your edge, go down, push, 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 change. Back to the center, nice work. Take a big inhale here. On your exhale, breathing, bend your body to the left, keep your shoulders and your hips both squared forward in one line. Here we go. Big inhale, 
Exhale, breathing. Take it to the left, artichoke house in a half moon. Keep everything squared forward toward the mirrors in front of you. Now, put your weight in your heels. Both hip points should be pressing forward. Look at yourself in the mirror and see if your hips are squared in one line. You may need to pull your right hip slightly forward, but I think Amanda and Melissa, you need to both pull your left hip slightly forward. Left hip, there you go, perfect adjustment right there. Now take your right shoulder, pull it back just a little bit more, both arms more back. Left hand can be used to pull the right hand, right arm, both arms over toward the windows to the left. Go down and push and push and push and pinch. All right, back bending, total spine bending here. So you're gonna drop your head, relax your neck, don't be scared. You feel like you're gonna fall, but you won't fall. So you're immediately gonna take your arms back. Like you're drawing a line on the ceiling here. So your arms are straight, arms are strong, biceps to the temples, weight in the heels, hips forward, total spine stretch from top of the neck, cervical region of the neck, all the way into the low lumbar back. Total spine, backward bending. Go back, look back, reach back, fall back, more back, change, come out. All right, now come up. Hinge forward over the hips. Bend your knees a little bit again if you need to. This is your opportunity to practice some mindful body movement again. One more opportunity to check in with the body and just feel what your body needs to continue warming up through the spine, through the hamstrings. One of the best ways to stretch through the hamstrings, get the hips nice and open, is just keeping the heels down and moving the knees forward and back, forward and back, like you're speed walking. But if there's any other movement that you feel is calling for you at this time, feel free to take it. One more moment here. And when you're ready, we move into our second set, Padahastasana, hands to feet pose. Bend your knees a whole lot. Now place your belly on the thighs. Remember, your body is like a Japanese ham sandwich here. There's no gap in between the belly and the thighs. Eventually, we'll all look like perfect human jackknives with straight legs, belly on the thighs, forehead on the shins. So hands are behind, reaching back. Scoop your hands underneath your heels if you can. Otherwise, you can have the hands flat behind your legs. See if you can press your forehead into the shins. Baby fingers are touching side by side behind your heels if you're grabbing your heels. That's it, really nice. Now press your forehead into the shins, roll your body weight forward, and lift your hips high to the sky. Tremendous stretch in here through the hamstrings. You may even feel a slight pain sensation in the hamstrings. This is normal. If your legs are shaking, this is also normal. So rip hard, pull hard, lock your legs on your exhale. Let's try it one more time. Roll forward, exhale breathing, push your knees toward the window behind you, lock your knees, lock your knees, lock your knees, and change. Come out, arms up. Steeple grip here, all the way up. Squeeze your biceps, suck the belly in, nice and strong. Release and breathe. All right, how are we feeling? Warmed up? All right, let's work. Let's step out with the right foot, six to eight inches apart. Two to possible sequence is coming next. Let's do fist with distance. Feel free to measure that if you need to. You can bring your arms up perfectly parallel to the floor. Reach your fingers long like you're trying to touch the mirrors in front of you. Put your weight in the heels. Put yourself in the mirror and don't put your gaze. Weight in the heels as you sit down, as if there is an imaginary chair underneath your seat. So you want to get your thighs perfectly parallel to the floor eventually. So look at yourself in the mirror and notice also if you have the same distance between your feet, knees, and your hands. If your knees are folding out or in, see if you can make sure that you're keeping the same distance between feet, knees, and hands. Sit a little lower, arch your upper body back, inhale, and change. Now, keep your arms right there, don't move your arms. Now, up you go like a ballerina dancer. Onto the toes maximum, hold it right there. Look forward, look at yourself in the mirror, get your balance, focus, concentrate, and meditate. Now, slowly sit back down into your chair, but stay high on your toes. It's more important here to stay high on the toes than it is to go low in the chair. Here, your knees may want to fold in or out again. See if you can keep the knees steady. You're working the strength here of your feet, your ankles, your knees, all of the major joints in the body are working hard for this posture. Sit a little lower, chest up, upper body back at the end, and change them out. Don't move your arms. Now, here we go. Just one inch of the ball of feet, just one inch. Squeeze your knees together, squeeze your inner thighs. Now you're going to slide down as if there is an imaginary wall behind you, keeping the shoulders pressing against the wall. So shoulder blades back against that imaginary wall, chest up. Try not to fold forward. Those look really nice. Keep squeezing the knees together, squeezing the inner thighs. 
Booty should be lifting off the heels. So your kneecaps should be pointing down toward the floor. So contract your quads so much that your kneecaps are pointing down slightly. And then over 10 slow counts in your own head, come up nice and slow. Keep your arms there, chest up, shoulders back, lift up nice and slow. That's it. Beautiful work, ladies. All right, step it in, release, take a breath. Second set, are we ready? Let's do it. Step out with your right foot six to eight inches apart. Bring your arms up parallel to the floor. Stretch your fingers long. Now pull your shoulders back a little bit like you're pulling your shoulders back into the sockets so that that will help prevent you from coming forward in the chair pose. So awkward sequence, here we go. Weight in the heels, sit down, right into your imaginary chair here. Now it's an awkward pose, it's meant to feel awkward so you can stick your booty back toward the windows behind you. Put your weight in your heels so much that you feel like you're going to fall backwards. Arch your upper body back. Make sure you have the same distance between feet, knees, and hands. Now, sit a little lower. Put your weight in your heels and look down. See if you can see your big toe. If you can't, then put your weight more in the heels. You may even want to lift up all ten toes to get the weight into the heels. Now, arch your upper body back. Inhale at the end and change. Come out. Nice. All right, now up onto the toes you go. Let the ballerina dancer maximum all the way up onto the top of the toes. Make sure you look at yourself in the mirror here, focus, concentrate, meditate. Now sit down back into the chair, keep the shoulder blades back against the imaginary wall behind you, sitting down into the chair. Keep the same distance between feet, knees, and hands. It's more important in this particular posture to stay high on the toes than it is to go low in the chair. So keep trying, you're almost finished, you can do it, hang on to it, five more counts, four, three, two, one, change, come out. All right, last one here, we got this. Come just one inch over the ball of the feet. Squeeze your knees together, squeeze your inner thighs, slide down the imaginary wall behind you, keeping your shoulder blades pressing into the wall. So chest up, you may not be able to get all the way down, and that's okay, everybody's typically at a different level in this posture. If you are able to go all the way down this time, feel free to take a couple bounces here. Balance, check the body. Keep squeezing the knees together. Don't let your knees part. Keep squeezing through the inner thighs, lifting through the pelvic floor as you very slowly start to come out. Nice and slow. Ten counts. Here we go. Lift up. Squeeze and lift. Think about engaging the mula bandha here, the root lock right at the pelvic floor. Change. Step in and breathe. Relax. All right. Garbhasana Eagle Pose is next. Bring your arms up overhead sideways. Now I see your right hand from your left. Try not to get them mixed up. You're going to swing the right arm underneath the left arm. Wrap it, twist it, and grip. Press your palms together if you can. Otherwise, you can hang on to whatever you can hang on to. You can also take any modification that your body needs. Now put your weight in your heels and sit right back down into your imaginary chair. Lift your right leg up nice and high. Give some space there to wrap it around. You're trying to be able to wrap the foot around eventually. This is a compression posture, so it acts like a tourniquet effect. So what we want is the most compression possible through the joints. So if you're unable to see the five toes on the opposite side of the left shin, that's okay, but keep pointing the toe in the direction that you want them to go. And eventually you'll be able to see those five toes on the opposite side of the left shin. Now pull your knee to the right, torso to the left, to line everything up into the midline of the body. Sit a little lower, pull your chest up, shoulders back, inhale and change. Come out, arms up. Left arm swings under the right, wrap it, twist it, grip. Press the palms together, you know, lace your fingers or take the modification. Now sit low into your heels as you lift your left leg up. Lift it high, give it some space to wrap it around. If you can see all five of your toes, then you start pulling everything in, back into the midline. You want to line everything up into the middle of the body. You want to line up from the ankles to the knees to the belly button to the elbows, the wrist to the nose to the forehead. So knee to the left, torso to the right, chest up, inhale, change, count arms up. Straight into the second set, here we go. Right arm swings under the left, rapid twist, grip. Press your palms together. Now try to look at your thumbs, your pinky fingers are showing in the mirror if you have the palms together. That's it, perfect, Melissa. All right, weight in the heels, you're gonna sit low, right back into your chair. Stay low, now lift the leg up, wrap the leg around. Just give it some space, see if you can see all five of your toes on the opposite side of the shin. Now let's line everything up, compression here into the midline, knee to the right, torso to the left. Compression is key here, this posture acts as a tourniquet effect. On the release is when the magic happens, blood begins to flow, change. Come out, arms up. All right, left arm swings under the right. Take your eagle arms here, and then when you're ready, sit low, weight in the heels, chest up, shoulders back. Lift your left leg up, lift it high, give it some space, see if you can see all five of your toes on the opposite side of your right shin. 
Point your toes in the direction that you want them to go so that you can keep wrapping. Tourniquet effect here. It's a really beautiful posture to send energy, mobilizing blood flow through those parts of the body that tend to have very little blood flow happening. So sit a little lower, pull your chest up, knee to the left, torso to the right. Everything lining up into the midline and change. Come out, arms up. Hello, quads. Release. Yeah. Y'all feeling it? And quads? All right. Good work. That's the warm up. So have some water if you need it. It's party time. That's what we like to say in hot yoga. If you need water, take it. If you don't need it, then don't take it. Just make sure that you stay very hydrated always before and after you do the practice. All right, ready for some balancing? Remember the modifications? You can take those if you need to, no problem, okay? All right, this is for its knee pose standing. So we're gonna do this one twice, and you can start with modifications or you can move into the full expression of postures wherever you wanna to be today. First thing we're gonna do is stand up nice and tall. Okay, make sure that your left thigh is contracting as you lift your right leg up. You want your leg to be about 90 degree angle, you're flexing your right toes up toward your face. Now you can stay right here to work the psoas muscle, a really important intrinsic core muscle, or if you want to take this a little deeper, then you can take the hands gently, place them underneath the thigh, and kick forward with the right foot. Otherwise, you can start to interlace all ten of the fingers underneath the foot. If all of you are going to stay right here, this is a great place to be, no problem. Just hold on to it, work in the psoas, make sure you're not leaning back into it, forward just a little bit if you need to, five more counts, working on the balance, focus on your drishti, focus forward, and change. Very nice. All right, so just take that same variation now on the left side, just balance out, and then we'll go full expression in the next set. When you're ready, make sure that you're contracting your right thigh. The most important thing is the standing leg here. It needs to be contracted, okay? So lock it out, it's like a lamp post, unbroken, no knee. Now lift your left leg up, lift it high, Stay right here, coming forward a little bit with the spine if you need to. If you feel like you're leaning back into it, then try to come upright so that you're really forcing the psoas muscle, that really important entrance and core muscle, to do the work here. It's your hip hiker muscle. This is exactly what you're doing with this posture. You're hiking up the hip. Very nice. Five more counts. Four, three, two, one, and change. All right, now you can move into full expression or take any other modification that you need for your body. And we've worked through those over the last couple weeks, so feel free to take whatever variation you're working on today. When you're ready, make sure your left thigh is nice and contracted, okay? Remember the lamp post analogy, unbroken, no knee. Now lift your right leg up. Start to interlace all ten of your fingers underneath your foot. And you're trying to get your thumb also underneath the foot. Web your fingers together, try to interlace all ten of the fingers. Make sure your left thigh is recontracting. Get your balance and focus. Now, if your left leg is straight and contracted, then you kick forward with your right foot. Lead with your heel and pull your toes towards your face. Try to get your right leg perfectly parallel to the floor. Kick forward, pull your toes back towards your face. If and only if both legs are straight and you look like a perfect human L from the side, then we can start lowering the elbows down toward the shin. That's it. Keep trying. Get right back in if you fall out. No problem. We have time. One more effort here. Let's try it one more time. We can do it. Happy Thursday. Yeah. Kick <laughs> forward. There you go. That's it, Amanda. Toes toward your face there. Contract your left thigh. Hang on to it. Look forward for three, two, one. Change. All right. Good effort. 100% effort, right? It's 100% benefit in this practice. Let's try the other side. Here we go. All right, shift your weight here a little bit into the right leg, contract your right thigh, lift your left leg up, and interlace all ten of the fingers around the foot, including the thumb. So we want to make sure that the thumb is also underneath the foot. Get that nice grip, webbing of the fingers. Right thigh is contracted. Focus forward. Now, kick forward the left leg, leave the heel, pull your toes toward your face. Once the leg is straight, and only if both legs are straight, and you look like a perfect human L, then you start to lower the elbows down toward the shin, and eventually the forehead will come to the knee. But otherwise, you stay right there, just focusing on the balance and focusing, try to get the legs straight by leaning with the heel. Kick forward with the heel, pull the toes toward the face. One more effort if you fall out. One more effort. You have time. Go for it. 
One more second. You can do it. Here we go. That's it. Kick forward. That's it, Amanda. Nice. Toes toward the face. Toes toward the face. Leg up. Yes. Awesome. So good. That's so hard. Let's take a little back bend here. Take the hands to the small of the back. Just to release the low back and the hips. Feels really nice. You can also take some hip wiggles or circles or just anything else that you feel like you need to release the low back. That posture is a ton of work for the body. So good effort there. We're going to move into our standing bow pulling pose next. Starting on the right side. Bring your right palm out. Like you're holding some money. Don't drop the money. Kick into your right foot. Drop the hand and grab an ankle from the inside. That nice grip on the foot, the ankle. And then pull the knee in. Inner thighs pull back together. No distance, no gap. Now reach up and long with your left arm. Take a big inhale. And then charge forward. Kick up and kick back into the back foot. Body down as the leg comes up. So kicking into the foot will push the body forward. You want to continue to feel your foot kicking into the hand. Eventually, body comes down parallel to the floor. Belly button parallel to the floor. Make sure your left thigh is contracting. If you fall out, no worries. We get right back in. We have a full minute here to play with this posture. We keep these postures nice and long so that you have time to get right back in and fall out. Make sure you're allowing the back to arch. That's it, Melissa. Looks really beautiful. Body down, leg up. Kick harder. Get the foot up over the head. Eventually, you'll see all five of your tongues on the opposite side of your head. Keep your drishti forward, fingers long toward the mirror in front of you. Pull your right shoulder back behind the left. Shoulders in one line like an archer with her bow. Change. Come out. All right. Let's do the other side. Left palm comes out. Kick into the left foot. Drop your hand. Grab the ankle from the inside. Pull the knee back in, no distance, no gap. Now right arm comes up, pull it strong, reach, 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 take a big inhale on your exhale. Go for it. Kick up, kick back. Make sure you're kicking hard into the foot, so hard that you feel your foot kicking into the hand as it pushes your body down. Pull your fingers long if you're trying to touch the mirror in front of you. Don't lose your gaze. Try not to let your arms sag. See if you can get the arm perfectly parallel to the floor because your arm is heavy, it's gonna pull you forward. Now pull your inner thighs together like two magnets, holding them together. That's it, Melissa. Hang on to it. Ten more counts. Get right back in. You can do it. Five, four, three, two, one, and change. Awesome work. All right. Heart rate is coming up. Yes, you feel it? Take a rest if you need to. Always sit down. Lay down anytime you need to. We're going to do that one again. We'll do it half the time. Here we go. Right palm comes out. Palm is facing the ceiling. Drop your hand, kick into your foot, and grab your ankle from the inside. Pull your knee back in, lift your left arm up. Take an inhale, on your exhale, charge forward, kick up, kick back. Everybody on one leg together, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Inner thighs, think about squeezing. 11, 12, right shoulder behind the left, shoulders in one line. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, keep going, 22, 23, 24, you can do it, 25, you got this, 27, 28, 29, 30, all right, it helps to smile, all right, left palm comes out, last one here, we can do it, I know the heart rate is up, that's what's supposed to be happening right now with these big postures. Kick into the left foot, drop your hand, grab your ankle from the inside, hug your knees, hug your inner thighs. Lift your right arm up, nice and high. Take a big stretch long, inhale, exhale, charge forward, go for it. Body down, leg up, kick up, kick back. Arch your back, give your, arc, give your spine a nice extension here, so don't be scared to open up the spine. You have 20 more seconds, let's do it. Everybody on one leg. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and done. Nice. So good. All right. Awesome work. Come to the back of the mat. Let's get the heart rate up just a little bit more. And then we get to slow it down a little bit. Take a quarter turn to the left, facing the mirrors. To the left. Come to the back of your mat. Bring your arms up overhead sideways. Take a big giant step to the right. Big giant step. Four feet minimum and bring your arms to a T. Arms parallel to the floor. What's that? Oh, you're right. We didn't do it. I oh, didn't tell you guys come to the back of your mat. Thank you so much. I just going to skip that. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely can't skip that on record, right? All right. Thank you. I was wondering why you were looking at me. Yeah. <laughs> and I just said we're going to get the heart rate up more. Arms up, overhead sideways. Interlace your chin fingers. Release the 
point your finger, stretch your body long. You're reaching up out of the waist. Now, take a big inhale. Step forward with your right foot, up both legs, and go for it. Charge forward. There you go. Left leg lifts. You want to look like a perfect human capital T from the side. So get your left leg up perfectly parallel to the floor. Reach and stretch, reach and stretch, reach and stretch. Change. Come out. Nice. All right. Step forward with your left foot. Walk both legs. Body down. Leg up. Lift your right leg up. Right leg perfectly parallel to the floor. Try to square your hips. You want to look like a perfect human capital T. T for Thursday. T for today. Change. In the moment. Today. All right. Arms down. Take a breath. Second set, arms up. Interlace the ten fingers, release the pointer fingers, stretch long. Squeeze your biceps here, so steeple grip here, so press the palms together, release the pointer fingers. That's it. No, no gap, no distance between the temples and the arms. Now step forward the right foot, block both legs, and go for it. Body down, leg up. Left leg comes parallel to the floor, reaching to stretch, arms pulling long, fingers toward the mirror in front of you, like a human tug of war. Oppositional movement between fingers and toes. Change. Come out. Step forward to left foot. Last one. We got this. Go for it. Leg up, body down. Parallel arms, parallel legs. You want to look like a perfect human, capital T, from the side. Reach and stretch. Stretch long. Reach and stretch. Change. Come up. Arms up. Release. And take a breath. All right. Now we can slow down the heart rate. Now I know your heart rate is up now, right? All right. Now we take the quarter turn toward the mirrors. Bring your arms up overhead sideways. Take a big giant step out to the right. Four feet minimum. Arms to the T. Put you your toes in just slightly. Suck the belly in. Squeeze the booty. Take an inhale. On your exhale, breathing hinge forward. Bring the hands to the outer edges of your feet or to your heels if your hamstrings will allow you to grab the heels. I'm going to be standing on your fingers. If you're able to grab your ankles or your feet or your heels, grab something so that you can pull. This is eventually a 360 degree full body stretch here. You're trying to get the forehead on the floor. So roll your weight forward into the balls of your feet and put your forehead on the floor. If you need to, you can open up your legs a little wider to get the forehead on the floor. Now roll forward, pull hard, box open the elbows, get the forehead on the floor. Contract the thighs to release the hamstrings. Once the hamstrings start to release, then the hips will start to open up. So one more effort here. Roll forward, full spine stretch, coccyx all the way to the crown of the head, coccyx into the bottom of the feet, and change. Come out. Suck the belly in all the way up, everything nice and strong. Engage your core. Step in with your right foot, bring your arms back up overhead, and release. All right, here we go. Trikonasana poses next. Bring your arms up overhead. Take a big giant step out to the right, bring your arms parallel to the floor. Pigeon toe the left toe in just slightly, turn your whole right foot toward the mirrors in front of you. Take a big giant bend into the right knee and take a couple of bounces to get the knee over the ankle, thigh parallel to the floor. Torso in the midline of the body, so pull it back a little bit if you need to, arms strong. Now when you're ready, just move your arms to the left, so you're taking your right arm and you're going to put it right in front of your right knee. So bend into the knee a little bit more. We're going to go a little deeper to get the elbow in front of the knee. Really nice transition there. Now take your right elbow and gently press your knee open toward the windows behind you. So you're opening up your hip here. Take your left arm, reach it up and long for the spine twist. Make sure your left leg is straight, pressing the razor edge of your left foot down into the mat. Now try to bring your chin to your left shoulder. So you're looking up into the middle finger on your left hand, and you're trying to touch the chin to the shoulder. So hold on to it right there. Five more counts. You can do it. Commit. Three, two, one. Change. All right. Turn your left toes toward the back windows. Right toe turns in just slightly. So pigeon toe your right toe in just a little bit there. And when you're ready, go down. Take a big giant bend into your left knee. Take a couple of bounces. Get your thigh perfectly parallel to the floor. And when you're ready, just tick tock your arms. So your right arm comes up, left arm down. Now bend into the knee more to get the elbow down in front of the knee. That's it, just like that. Now once you get the elbow down in front of your knee, then take your elbow and gently press your knee open toward the mirrors behind you. Straighten your right leg and press the outer edge of your right foot into the mat. Keep pressing gently the elbow into the knee to keep opening up the knee because that opens up the hip. Now pull your left booty forward a little bit here, reaching up and long with your right arm, reaching up and back for the spine twist. See if you can bring your chin to the shoulder there. Chin to the shoulder, commit right here. You can do it, keep breathing. Five more counts. Four, three, two, one, change. Come out. 
Turn all to toes toward the mirror. Step in with your right foot. Bring your arms back up overhead. Release and breathe. That's a big one. All right, one more here in this set. Come back to the back of your mat. Bring your arms overhead sideways. Cross your thumbs only this time. So your palms are pressed together and you're crossing your thumbs. You're going to step out only three feet, 36 inches to the right. So not quite as wide as the last two postures. Turn your body to the right toward the mirrors in front of you. Quarter turn and bounce your left hip forward several times. Now you may need to step out a little bit with the left foot. So brace step out a little bit so that you can get your left hip squared forward. Just like that. Very nice. Now tuck your chin, suck the belly in and go down. Bring the forehead to the knee. Bend your knee as much as you need to to press your forehead into the knee. You can open up your hands for some balance help at the bottom if you need to. And keep hugging your left hip forward and down as you hug your right hip up toward the sky to try to square and level your hips. See if you can press the forehead into the knee. Touch the forehead and the knee by pulling the chin up toward the belly button. Pull your eye gaze toward your belly button. Compression here, throat choke. This is the one time in our lives where we need to really embrace that double chin. So pull it in, compression of the thyroid happening here, all great things happening in the body. Let's bring the palms back together. You can try to straighten out your legs the last couple seconds. Slowly exit the posture, suck the belly in nice and slow. Take a quarter turn back toward the mirrors, get your balance, and then pivot all the way around toward the back of the room. Make sure you step out a little bit with the right foot if you need to. Bounce your right hip forward a few times. Straight legs going down. Suck the belly and tuck the chin and bring the fingers down in front of the toes just a couple of inches. Keep your palms together if you can. Otherwise, you can open up your hands for a little bit of balance up at the bottom. But make sure you press your forehead into the knee. So bend your knee as much as you need to here to press the forehead into the knee. The object of this particular posture is not the straight front leg, it's the forehead to the knee, the throat choke, throat compression, sending energy into your endocrine system by compressing the thyroid and the parathyroid glands. Two really important glands for mobilizing all of your basic metabolic functions, so very important posture here. Last couple seconds, you can try to straighten your front leg, try to lock it out as you slowly exit, suck your belly in, keep everything nice and tight all the way up, the slower you go, the better. Chin comes up very last, quarter turn back toward the mirrors, step in with your right foot, bring your arms down by your side, and take a breath. All right. We are nearing the end of our standing sequence. Awesome work. Quarter turn back toward the mirror in front of you, Tree pose is next. We'll do tree and then we'll do toe stand. So you can practice toe stand in the second set or you can take two sets of tree today. Whatever you want to do today is totally fine. All right, reach down, grab your right foot with your left hand. Pull your foot up into the hip socket for your half lotus tree. Make sure your left thigh is contracting, stand up nice and tall. You can hang on to the foot with the left hand. If you want to bring your right hand for half on a scar, you can bring it up into prayer. You can also try to let go of the left hand, the, of the right foot with the left hand if you want to come into full on the scar, but you can also just hang on to that foot, no problem. Look forward, focus, slowing down the heart rate a little bit. It's a meditative breathing posture here. So focus, concentrate, meditate, and change. Come on. All right. Good work. Other side. Here we go. Reach down, grab your left foot with your right hand. Coming into your half lotus tree on the left. Make sure your right thigh is contracting. You're standing up nice and tall. Booty in, not sticking out. Stand up tall. Row the spine long. The left hand comes to heart center. Maybe followed by the right. Otherwise, you can hang on to the foot. No problem. Just really nice, Amanda. Hang on to that. Contract your right thigh. Look forward. Focus forward. Think about that drishti, your viewpoint. Always forward and change, come out. All right, shake that off a little bit if you need to. You can move into toe stand here if you have that in your practice or if you just want to fold forwards of the hips a little bit or you can take tree one more time and practice your balance. Start with the right side, coming into the half lotus tree on the right. If you want to move into toe stand, then bring both hands to heart center. Slowly start to fold forward. You can also just fold here and just see what the hips are allowing you to do today. If you can fold forward and get your fingertips on the floor with a straight left leg, then you can start to move closer into your toe stand. Just see where you are today. See what's happening with the body. Get the fingers down on the floor. It's really good, Bree. That's it. That's how you're going to get it. Keep your left leg straight, thigh contracting. Look forward. 
and change. Nice work. Good effort. All right, other side. Here we go. Last seating posture before you get to go to the floor. Left side. Grab your left foot with your right hand coming into your half of this tree on the left. Bringing the hands to heart center, folding forward. Bring the fingertips to the floor if you want to move into toe stand. Or you can just fold. The hips will definitely tell you when to stop. They'll start talking, they'll start calling out. That's enough. It's a really great way to open up the hips. Be careful with the knees, careful with the ankles. Wherever you are is a good place. Slowly start to come out and change. All right, we're gonna earn some time on your back. Nice work, y'all. You know what they say in the hot yoga practice? 100% effort yields 100% benefit. So this is a two minute shavasana here. I'm going to dim the lights a little bit for you to keep your eyes open. This is an open eye meditation for you to allow your body to come back to what we call internal homeostasis. That's just a fancy way of saying internal constancy or equilibrium. You're trying to allow your blood to start to flow again more evenly through the body. And we do this through relaxing fully from the crown of the head all the way down to the bottom of the feet. Allowing the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest system to come back into control. Thinking about the body a little bit like a physiological teeter-totter, sort of hovering around that equilibrium. You want to try to get it as well balanced as possible, like two evenly balanced children on that teeter-totter. And that's what you're doing here by relaxing your face, softening your jaw, softening through your throat. And if you tend to hold tension in your jaw, maybe bring some awareness there to your face. See if you can just drop the face muscles down toward the earth, unclenching the jaw, and softening down through the shoulders, into the hips. Everything is melting as if you're floating on a magic carpet. Moving poses next. Bend your right knee, interlace all ten of your fingers around your shin just below your knee. Now avoid your rib cage, avoid your belly, and pull your knee up toward your right shoulder. You're working the psoas here, stretching it out so you want to feel that nice pinching sensation through the psoas muscle, but in the meantime, make sure you're regrounding through the left shoulder blade and regrounding through the left calf. So pull the knee in a little closer, find your edge, and hold it right there. Tuck your chin. You're trying to elongate the spine so much that you remove the space underneath the gape of the neck and the floor. Compression happening here of your lower abdominals, mobilizing energy now upward through your ascending colon. Change, come out, left side. Bend your left knee in, interlace your fingers around your shin. Avoid your rib cage and pull your knee up and over towards your left shoulder. Tuck your chin, reground through your right shoulder blade, reground through your right calf. You may need to hug your right toes towards your face a little bit to get the right calf down and grounded. You're mobilizing energy now here through the descending colon, so that's downward mobility of energy through the digestive system. This posture is so good for your overall digestive health. So if any of you have any digestive issues, this is something you could be working on at home every single day. So pull the knee in, get that nice pinch to the psoas muscle, almost like a little pain sensation there in the hip, and then change, come out. Both knees come in, wrap your arms around the shins, grab your opposite elbows. If you're unable to grab your opposite elbows, don't worry, just keep walking the fingertips around, eventually you'll be able to grab your opposite elbows. But hug it in, pull it in, getting a nice compression through your lower abdominal cavity, sending energy now across your transverse colon, part of the colon that goes across the digestive system. So hug it in, nice and tight, tuck your chin to elongate the spine, eventually your whole spine will lay completely flat on the floor. Change, come out. Just a few moments here, just a couple of breaths. We're going to do that one one more time. We won't hold it as long. We're going to refine it a little bit. All right, when you're ready, 
Right knee comes in, interlace your fingers around the shin just below your knee. Now let's refine this a little bit. Avoid your rib cage and pull the knee up and over to the right. You know where you're going. So now, make sure you're regrounding through the left shoulder and left calf as you start to pull your elbows in and down. Eventually both elbows coming down toward the floor. Tuck your chin a whole lot. Pull the shoulders down away from the ears and hold it right there. Freeze it. Breathe. Focus. Concentrate. Meditate. Change. Come out. Left side. Again, you know where you're going. We're going to refine it a little bit. So pull it in. Up and over toward the left shoulder, avoiding the rib cage. Regrounding it in through the right shoulder blade and the right calf. Tuck your chin a whole lot. We're trying to remove that space from underneath the gape of the neck and the floor. Pull your elbows in toward the ribs and down toward the floor as you pull the shoulders down away from the ears. Hug it in. Focus right here. Find your edge. Hang on to it and breathe. Change. Come out. Both knees come in. Wrap your arms around the shins. Grab your opposite elbows. Tuck your chin a whole lot. Big compression happening through the lower abdominals. Pull it in. Keep walking the fingers around. Eventually you'll be able to grab your opposite elbows. Hang on to it. Change. Come out. Couple breaths here. Just relax in this space. Getting ready for our first straight leg sit up here. So remember what we've been talking about over the last few weeks about really engaging the core. So remember when you do your sit up to fully properly engage the core, we need to tighten through the glutes, the lower abdominals, lifting through the pelvic floor. So you're going to squeeze your booty a whole lot when you sit up, and that's going to really help protect the low back. You're trying to keep the heels down as you sit up. Okay, let's try it. Here we go. Arms up, cross your thumbs, pull your feet together, hug your toes towards your face. You're flexing the toes toward the face. Now suck your belly in, take a big inhale in, sit up. Forehead and shins, double exhale, up and over. Very nice. All right, on the belly, back to your knee sequences next. We'll start with Cobra Pose. Bring your fingertips right to the deltoids, your pinky fingers right in line with the deltoids. Bring your feet and your heels together. Zip your heels all the way up to your coccyx, like a cobra tail, no leg. Now pull your elbows in toward the ribs, everything pull it in toward the body. Chin on the mat. Take an inhale, peel your chest off the floor. Make sure that your thighs are contracting here, your kneecap should be lifting off the floor, press into the tops of your feet. If your belly button starts to lift off the floor, you've gone too far, you can lower the belly button back down and hold it right there. You're trying to get a perfect 90 degree angle right in your elbow joints. Change, come down. Rest your right cheek, look to the left. We'll do that one second time. Bring your arms back down to the side. Palms up, Shavasana. Find your stillness, find your meditative breathing. We're about to get the heart rate up a little bit more here in this back strengthening sequence. And let's do it again. Chin forward, bring your fingertips to the deltoids, hug your elbows in toward the ribs. Feet heels together, zip your heels all the way to the coccyx like that cobra tail, no leg. Make sure your thighs are nice and contracted, kneecaps should be lifting off the floor. Elbows in, chin on the floor, inhale, peel your chest off the mat. Make sure you're pressing the tops of the feet into the floor, pressing into the hands, elbows toward the ribs. Go up a little higher. One more inch, lift up, using the muscles in the low back. Change, come out, really nice. Left cheek down, look to the right. Bring your arms back down by the side. Take a few breaths, feeling the heart right now as it starts to pound a little bit into the chest. This is normal. Now bring your chin back forward here, moving into our lotus pose. You're going to press your palms into the earth, and you're going to keep your arms as straight as possible, and walk your arms underneath the body, like you're bumping a volleyball underneath the body. So your hip point should be pressing into the forearms. It might not feel comfortable, but that's a normal sensation to feel in this posture. Now contract your right thigh and lift your right leg off the floor. You want to have a 45 degree angle here, half of 90. So all three of you can come up much more higher. Squeeze your booty to get your leg up, pressing into the bottom foot. There you go. Nice, Melissa. Good adjustment there. Point your toes toward the, toward the windows behind you and straighten your leg. Lift your leg a little higher. You can do it. Change. Come out. All right, left leg. Contract and lift. Left leg comes up. Press into the top of the right foot. So the right foot should be flat on the floor. You're pressing into the top of the foot. Keep your hip points down. That's it, really nice work. Up a little higher, you can do it. Point your toes, keep your chin on the mat. Change, come down. All right, now shift your body weight forward. Spread your fingers really wide. Your weight is shifting into the shoulders a whole lot. 
You're gonna spread your fingers so wide that your opposite baby fingers are touching underneath the body if possible. Now, when you're ready, look down, kiss your towel, mouth to the towel, and lift up. Both legs lifting off the floor. That's it, those look really good. Get your thighs up, point your toes and straighten your legs. Thighs up off the floor, point your toes, straighten your legs, go up a little higher. It's meant to struggle, 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 change. Come down, relax. Rest your right cheek, look to the left. Heart rate is coming up. Arms are probably screaming a little bit. This is normal. It's okay to smile. Y'all are so serious today. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> All right. Probably don't want to do that again. Right? <laughs> so hard. All right, let's do our full lotus. Bring your chin back forward, arms out like a T, like an airplane. You may need to stagger on your mats a little bit here. Give each other a little love pat on the hand. Pull your feet and your heels back together, just like that cobra snake from the cobra posture. And then when you're ready, chin on the mat. Take an inhale, you're gonna lift up. Chest and thighs both come off the mat like a flying bird, like a 747 jet here. Bring your fingertips up above your head, pull your arms back just a little bit. Roll your body weight forward into the hips a little bit and lift up. Let's fly, fly like birds. Think about yourself, maybe you're a hawk, an eagle, an owl. Change, come down. Chicken. <laughs> Left cheek. A chicken, is that what you said? <laughs> I think you looked better than a chicken. <laughs> Nice work, y'all. All right, we're gonna do that one again. I know it's deceptively challenging, this posture. It's so good for the spine. Let's try it one more time. Chin forward, arms out, like an airplane, like a T. When you're ready, take an inhale and lift up. Chest and thighs both come off the mat. Chest and thighs off the mat. Try to keep your legs straight, pull your feet back together and look up. Remember, your eyes are also back bending. You're working into the middle spine. Now roll your body weight forward. Lift up, fingertips above the head and change, come down. Very nice. Right cheek down, look left. Heart rate is starting to pound a little bit more in the chest. That's normal. We get the heart rate up just a little bit more now. In the next posture, our floor bow, will do it twice as well. Chin forward. Bend your knees, reach back, grab your feet from the outside. You can also grab one foot at a time and do one side at a time, no problem. If you have any shoulder issues or knee issues or back issues, you can always do one side at a time or you can reach back for the other foot, hang on to it. All right, when you're ready, you're gonna take a big inhale, fill your lungs with air and lift up, chest and thighs off the mat. Now little sips of air in and out your nose, 80-20 breathing here. Keep kicking into the feet, pull your knees back together a little bit more, yes, beautiful. Now, kick harder into the feet, kick, kick, kick. Feel your feet kicking into the hands as you look up and back, look at the ceiling, find a point on the ceiling, stare at it, don't lose your gaze, lift up, rock your body weight forward, pull hard, kick harder, change. Left cheek down, look right. Those were really good. So hard, right? You feel your heart right now pounding in your belly? So that big cluster of nerves that gathers in your belly area is called your solar plexus. And that's where you're really feeling that heart rate because those big heart openers will shunt the blood away from the heart and out of the belly and then it all storms back in when you release. So it's also the beauty of the postures. But when you do these big heart openers, sometimes it can really release it not only releases tension, but sometimes emotions and all kinds of stuff come up. But that's the beauty of the practice. Let's try that one one more time. Really good for your overall spine health. Bend your knees, reach back, grab your feet from the, from the outside or grab the other foot. Remember, big breath in and then you can take little sips of air once you get up. Okay, so big breath in here on the inhale as you lift up. Chest and thighs both come off the floor. Two wheels in one base. Pull your knees together. There you go, really nice Amanda, great adjustment. Kick harder, feel your feet kicking into your hands. Straighten your arms, straighten your wrists, look up. Find that point on the ceiling that you were staring at in the last set and see if you can go one inch beyond that point. One more inch, look up, you can do it. Kick harder, feel your feet in your hands, change. Come down. Rest your right cheek, look left. All right. Heart rate pounding in the belly. Okay, that means you did it right. Just breathe, just relax here. These little shavasanas are meant 
for us to bring the body back to that internal checkpoint that I talked about earlier in the longer Shavasana. So you want to hover around that teeter-totter as best as possible during the seated sequence. All right, bring your chin back forward now. Press yourself up through tabletop, coming up toward the front of your mat in your Japanese kneeling position for fixed firm pose. And whatever variation you're working here, just listen to your body, listen to the knees, ankles. Open up your knee, open up your feet to a V, and then bring your seat down in between your feet and then pull your knees back together if you can. Trying to keep your knees on the floor, feel free to grab your feet and lay back if you have that in your practice. Otherwise, you can stay right where you are, wherever you need to be. Get the booty all the way on the floor before you lean back. If your knees start to lift up, then you've gone far enough. Or you can open up the knees a little bit as you go back. And then when you get all the way down, try to pull the knees back together. Now, if you're all the way down, Melissa, like you, you can bring your arms up overhead, grab your opposite elbows, give me an arch in the low back, tuck the chin, pull the knees, squeeze the inner thighs, just breathe, tuck your chin, eyes open, and change. Grab your feet, one elbow at a time, helping you come up onto the forearms, and then turn around. Now the magic is gonna happen. All that beautiful blood now is flowing through those parts of the body that have very little levels of vascularization. So low levels of vascularization basically just means very little blood flow through those parts of the body. And so this posture is really good for healing. It's also good for prevention of injury in those parts of the body. All right, bring your arms up, press your thumbs, feet heels together, toes towards your face. Suck your belly and engage your core, take an inhale, quickly sit up. Heels down, forehead to the shins. All right, nice breath I heard there. Turn around, second set, fixed firm. Come to the front of the mat, open up your feet to a V and bring your seat down to the floor where you can stay right there, upright, wherever you wanna be here. Just remember, it's a good place. If you're ready to go back, grab your feet, lay down one elbow at a time. Guiding your way back, pull your knees and your inner thighs back together. Bring your arms up overhead. Give me an arch in your low back, chest up toward the sky, and tuck your chin. Just breathe. Focusing here. It's a really good posture to use as a check-in for what your body's doing. Slowly start to come out, grab your feet. One forearm at a time, one elbow at a time, coming all the way up, turn around, and let the magic happen. Just breathe. All right, moving on, bring your arms up overhead, cross your thumbs, feet heel together, toes towards your face, suck your belly in, take an inhale quickly, sit up. Double exhale, hear your breath. Should be a really nice audible breath, turn around. Moving into the animal sequence now. Half tortoise pose toward the back of the mat. So you're back into your Japanese kneeling position here. You're gonna bring your arms up overhead sideways. Cross your thumbs only here. Press your palms together all the way from your wrist into the fingers. Suck your belly in, strong arms, arms by the ears, go down. Bring your fingertips to the floor. So only the pinky fingers here should be touching the floor. Keep pressing the palms together. And we're lifting the elbows up off the floor. So we want the arms to be straight, palms together. Straight, strong arms. Now, press into your pinky fingers and try to get your seat back a little closer to your heels, making your body small but long. Suck your belly in, engage your core. Let's exit the posture. Strong, straight arms. Keep your arms by the ears all the way up, nice and slow. You got it, that's it. Release. Breathe and turn around. That posture is really important to keep active. Sometimes it feels a little bit like a resting pose, but it's really important to keep it active because it's a big stretch of the shoulders and the low back, which sets us up for camel, which is the posture that's coming next. And camel is the peak back bend of the whole practice. So we'll do camel two times today. So let's bring the arms up overhead, cross the thumbs, feet heels together, toes towards your face. Suck your belly and take an inhale quickly. Sit up. Turn around. Camel pose. Come to the front of your mat, up onto the knees. Bring your arms back to the small, or hands to the small of the back, fingertips and thumbs pointing down. Now press your hips, belly, thighs forward. 
Drop your head, relax your neck, look up, go back. Bring your hands down to the heels if you want to, but there's no need to go full expression unless you just want to. You have two sets today. If your hands are on your heels, then keep pressing the hips forward. Hips, belly, thighs, always pressing forward. Relax your neck, relax your breath, full breath here. And slowly come out one hand at a time on the low back. These are all amazing camels today. Sit down, turn around, and relax. Big heart opener there. If that one brings out some emotion in you or starts to make you feel weird or woozy or even dizzy, just know that that's normal. Those big heart openers can bring out a lot of emotion in us. Sometimes they can make people cry. Sometimes they can make people laugh. Sometimes they can make people throw up. It's all normal. Big postures. So good for us. All right, arms up, cross your thumbs, feet heels together, toes toward the face. Suck the belly in, take an inhale quickly, sit up, grab your toes, forehead to shins, and turn around. Second set, up on the knees. Hands to the small of the back, Look, your fingers are going down into the back pockets, press your hips, belly, thighs forward. Now drop your head, relax, look for the windows. If you want to take it deeper, one hand at a time to the heels. Try to get the palms on the heels if you can. And then keep pressing the hips, belly, and thighs forward. Relax your neck. Relax your breath here. So good. Those looked really nice. All three of you, amazing camels today. Bring your hands back to the back, small of the back, one at a time. Protect the low back as you sit down. Take a second if you need it. Turn around. And relax. Just breathe. Clench the jaw, soften the throat, soften the tongue. All right, arms up, crush your thumbs, feet heels together, toes towards your face, suck your belly in, take an inhale, quickly sit up. Turn around. All right, rabbit right pose is next. So come back into your Japanese kneeling position toward the back of your mat, fold your mat towel up and over your heels. Tuck your chin a whole lot. You're going to start to roll down one vertebrae at a time, like a rounded rabbit spine. Remember the grip is key. You must keep hold of the heels. If you don't have the heels yet, you can grab them on your way down. Now, forehead touches the knees. So walk your knees up to try to touch the foreheads to the knees. That's it. Keep walking the knees up. Eventually the forehead will touch the knees and you can start to lift your hips up. You're trying to get a 90 degree angle right in your knee socket there. So the grip is key to the posture. Straighten through the arms to lift the hips a little higher. Throat is restricted. Remind yourself that you're still breathing and slowly roll out one vertebrae at a time. All the way up, one vertebrae at a time, nice and slow. Chin comes up last. Turn around, relax. All right, raise your hand if you love that pose. No hands. Oh, you, oh, you do love it, okay. Well, I was gonna ask you if you feel like you need to do it again. <laughs> Usually it's the, the postures that we like the least, right, are the ones that we need to do more. I know, that kind of sucks, right? <laughs> it's just the way it is. So, arms up, cross your thumbs, feet heels together, toes toward your face, suck the belly in, inhale quickly, <laughs> sit up. I'll let you off the hook on that one, turn around. You're on your seat this time, your right leg is out, left leg is bending up like an L, like a 90 degree, your left foot is flat on the inside of the right thigh. And bring your arms up overhead, suck your belly in, turn your body to the right and go down, interlacing all 10 of the fingers around the right foot. All 10 of the fingers, so try to get the thumbs underneath the foot. And remember, this posture is very similar to the standing for a knee posture that we did at the beginning of class. So this posture will really help you with that standing balancing posture that's so challenging. So you want to kick forward the heel and pull your toes back towards your face. You're going to feel a burn through the calf, through the shin. Embrace your burn, toes toward the face. So try to flex your foot, hug your left shoulder inward. So you're going to roll the left shoulder in toward the inside of the body. That's it. Square the shoulders. One more effort here. Forehead on the knee, throat compression, straighten your leg, change. Come out, arms up. All right, switch legs. Left leg comes out, right leg bends up. Turn the body to the left. Go down on the other side, interlacing all 10 of the fingers around the foot. Try to get that nice grip with all 10 of the fingers, just like we practiced in our forehead to knee balance. 
Press your forehead into your knee. So bend your knee if you need to. This is a throat compression. So you want to pull your chin towards your belly button, eye gaze toward the belly button. Compression is key here, throat choked. Roll your right shoulder inward to square the shoulders. Very nice adjustments, I saw all of those. One more effort, kick forward, lead with the heel, toes towards your face, change, come out. Both legs come straight out in front of you. You're gonna lay back. As soon as you hit your mat, you're gonna do your own sit up at your own pace. Here we go. Double exhale, big breath out, nice. All right, grab your big toes with your peace fingers. Bend your knees a little bit if you need to and start to walk your hips back toward the windows behind you. Several times, five, 10, 15, 20 times. Bring the belly onto the thighs as you pull your forehead forward. So you're hanging onto your toes. You wanna to pull your pinky toes back towards your face. You're gonna feel that burn through your outer shins there. Try to connect the belly with the thighs. So think about the belly like a magic carpet, like you're rolling it out right onto the thighs and you're pulling the forehead long. This is a spinal extension. So one more effort, pull forward, lengthen the spine and slowly come out, nice and slow. Turn around and relax. Y'all are on the home stretch, almost finished. We got this. So, it's not super hot in here, not quite as hot as what we keep it in a regular class, so it feels a little different, right? It's a little, it takes a little bit more work to really warm up the body. Y'all are doing great. All right, arms up, cross your thumbs, feet heels together, toes towards your face, suck your belly and take an inhale quickly. Sit up. Double exhale. All right, turn around, spine twist. You're going to start with the right side, so bend your right knee up, place your right foot over your left leg. You're going to hook the ankle right at the knee. If you can keep both sit bones grounded, then bend the left leg up toward the body. Bring the right hand behind you, left arm up. You're going to twist your left arm to the other side of your right leg. So you're going to hook the elbow just above the knee. Yeah. Other side. Yeah, perfect. Just like that. So you're twisting around like a pretzel, like a rope. So hook the elbow. I was following you, so yeah, I was like, uh, <laughs> Opposite. Oh, I'm just doing the other leg. Yep, bend the right leg first, place it over. That's perfect, just like that. You don't have, yeah, and you don't have to bend the left leg. No worries. You want to try to just keep both sit bones grounded. That's the most important thing. And now you're twisting. So the most important thing about this particular posture is sitting up nice and tall. So you're trying to extend the spine, and then you twist on your exhale. So take a big inhale. Let's do it together. Lengthen, and on your exhale, twist, looking over the left shoulder. So you're trying to see the mercantile, the cute little shop over on the corner there. So keep twisting. One more inhale. Maybe take the right hand to your knee. Really good, Melissa. You've made some progress there in the last few weeks. Take the left hand. You can crawl those fingers back behind you if you want. Take a bind, slow back, and change. Come out. Take a little counter twist if that feels good, and then you're just going to switch legs. Now left leg bends up. Place it over the right. And then you can pull the right leg up toward the body if you can keep both sit bones grounded. So now left leg up and over. And then right arm hooks around the left leg. So you're going to hook the elbow just above the knee there. Maybe grab hold of the right knee. Maybe not. That's okay. Either way. And then you can go for the bind if you want to by rolling the right fingers back, placing the right arm at the small of the back, and eventually grabbing hold of that space right above your left thigh. Just hang on to it. Remember the spinal extension here. Big inhale to extend long. And on your exhale, take it a little deeper, looking over the right shoulder. This time you're looking for that little tiny white house back there in the field. Breath is restricted. Hang on to it. Change. Come out. A little counter twist if it feels good. And when you're ready, turn around. All the way around. One more mini Shavasana here before we close with our final cup of multi breath, breath of fire. Just relax. All right, let's do it. Arms up, cross your thumbs, feet heels together, toes towards your face, suck your belly in, take an inhale, quickly sit up. Double exhale, and turn around. All right, so this is our breath of fire, our final breathing exercise for class. We'll do two sets today. The first set will be slower, and then the second set will speed it up and we won't do as many reps. So you're going to come into Japanese kneeling position or any easy seat that's 
comfortable. Arms are straight, but relax. Shoulders away from the ears. Now remember, every time you exhale, pretend like you're blowing candles out on a birthday cake. And you're gonna snap your navel toward your spine. Every time you exhale, the inhale is passive. It'll take care of itself, okay? So keep the pace nice and slow here. Start. One, two, three, four. Cheer your breath. Suck the belly in, snap the navel toward the spine. Only the belly is moving, so isolate the belly. That's it. Hear your breath. Feel the belly burn, embrace the burn here. You have about 25 more, you can do it. Fifteen. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax. Swallow a couple times. Lick your lips if you need to. If your mouth is caught me and dry, then you're doing it right. Here we go. Much faster this time. Before we start, you're snapping the navel now up a little bit. A little bit higher up into the ribs, okay, when you speed up the breath. All right, let's do it. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. period here where you can find your Shavasana, close your eyes, relax fully from the crown of your head all the way down to the bottom of your feet. Ten or twenty nice full breaths. It's a really good way to sort of time, making sure that you're spending enough time in your final Shavasana. Try relaxing from the crown of your head, down your face, through the frontal belly, the muscle that covers your forehead. Softening through your face muscles, letting everything just fall heavy toward the earth. Unclench your jaw. Unclenching the jaw will also help release any tension through the hips. Soften through the neck, through the throat. All the way down through the spine, just letting every part of the body completely relax here in this space for just a few more moments. Final Shavasana, always the most important part of any of our yoga practices. Slowly start to find some movement in your fingers and your toes. Let's reach our arms up overhead. Give ourselves a nice full body, good morning stretch. Big stretch of self-love and gratitude for making your way to your mat today. Take a big inhale here. Big exhale, sigh it out, open mouth. Releasing any stress or tension that may be lingering in the body. Let it all go right here, right now, in this space. Basically.